Hi, beloved of the Lord, Randy Kay here. I'm going to share with you an important story that comes from the Bible and the application to your life. It has to do with Stephen. Now, some of you may know the Christ follower, Stephen, who was Jewish about 60 years after the time of Jesus, after his crucifixion. Stephen, along with many of the Jewish disciples, were evangelizing the known world at that time. In chapter 7 of Acts, verses 55 through 60, Stephen is stoned to death. He's stoned to death because he professes to know Jesus as God, as the Messiah. And this, of course, was, well, more than alarming to the Sanhedrins of the day, that is the religious, religious leaders. They were angered and sensed. And I say that because normally, as with the Pharisees in the time of Christ, they would go to the Roman Empire and Pilate in this case, who probably was, we believe, was the emperor at that time, the judge, and they would go to Pilate and say that they have a grievance against Stephen for his having spread this heresy, as they believed it to be, that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. Now, the Sanhedrins at that time went around, that is, they superseded the authority of the Romans. They decided that they would forego the trial that was by law required for anyone who had caused an egregious offense, a heresy, against the religious order and they would take it in their hands to render a judgment of death to Stephen. Stephen then was stoned to death. And while he was being stoned, the book of Acts in chapter 7 tells us that he looked up to heaven and he saw a vision of Jesus sitting on the right, or I'm sorry, standing the right side of God. He was standing on the right side of God. Now, what's important about him standing as opposed to sitting is that he was assuming the role of the Godhead. He was assuming a position of judgment. And he had declared as such to the people of that time. And so, while he was being stoned, he accounted for this vision, which was documented in the book of Acts, that was written by Luke. Now, Stephen was one of the first accounts of a near-death experience. He saw a vision of heaven, after looking up. He was at the effect of being stoned to death and he was ushered in to the presence of the Lord spiritually and he was at peace. There was a peace and comfort in him during the time when he was being killed. Now what does that tell us today? It tells us that Stephen had overcome death. Just as Jesus, through his resurrection, had overcome death. Because Stephen was in Christ, he knew Jesus as his Messiah. Now, many today would blame the Sanhedrin Pharisees, of course, for persecuting and killing Stephen and even Jesus at the crucifixion. But remember at this time that all of the disciples were Jewish. 
all of those who are evangelizing the world were Jewish followers of Jesus, their Messiah. So, the, the religious order was coming against the new evangelical movement of the Jewish messianic disciples who were spreading the good news of Jesus as having come as the Messiah for the forgiveness of all sins for those who confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Now, this was a shift in all of history that was happening because there was discipleship and many within the Jewish community, which was being ministered to primarily by Peter, the apostle Peter, they were not accepting Jesus as the Messiah. There were others, however, that were coming to know through the Jewish disciples coming to know Jesus as their Messiah. This is recorded in the scriptures as the age of the Gentiles being transferred from the time of uh, before Jesus, from the Jew, Jewish people in Israel to the age of the Gentiles. Now bear in mind that the first Christians were Jewish and there are many Messianic Jews today, those who believe in Jesus as their Messiah. And they, are the ones I know, are on fire for their Messiah. And they can put to shame some of the Gentiles who are, well, devoted to their Messiah. But there's something about that spirit of adoption in the Jewish person when they realize Jesus is their Messiah, that is absolutely spectacular. It's like coming home. Now, the reason I tell you this account of Stephen and what was going on in that age is that today we are seeing the transfer from the Gentile now coming back to the age of the Jewish believer. We are seeing now many who are coming to know Jesus as their Messiah in Israel and other places where the Jewish people reside in other countries. We are seeing a movement from the Gentile, age of the Gentile, what the Bible refers to, which is those who are the Gentile persuasion, who have been believers who are starting to fall away. We have found from a recent uh, poll that uh, more than perhaps any other time in the history of polling, that fewer people are now uh, stating Jesus as their Lord and their Savior than at any time in prior history. In other words, fewer believers in Jesus as the exclusive way as Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. Fewer people believing in that than in other recent historical times. What that means is there's a transfer that's happening again. At the time of Stephen and the disciples who are evangelizing the world and finding a receptive audience within the Gentile people or population, now we're seeing a gradual transfer back to Israel. It doesn't mean that God has taken his eyes off those who are of a Gentile persuasion, those who are not Jewish by heritage. No, it doesn't mean that. It means that the favor of God is turning to the outpouring of a, of a revival that will happen in Israel first and spread throughout the world. We're seeing it now. We're seeing it now. Uh, recently, I'm involved in a ministry uh, in Messianic Vision, Inc. that is headed by Sid Roth. He and his team went over to Israel, and they have seen now thousands come to know Jesus as their Messiah. 
it's like coming home to many uh, Jewish people who are coming to know that indeed Jesus was the Messiah that God had promised them in Isaiah. So we're seeing the revival that is happening. As that revival happens to the Jewish people, there is an outspreading that will affect the world such that there will be a revival, the likes of which all of history has not seen. There will be people of all persuasions who will come to know Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Why is this important? It is because Jesus, God, mourns for the lost. I've talked about this before, that I heard the mourning cry. That is the, I won't call it a saddening cry, it's a mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, cry in heaven for the lost. So God grieves for the lost such that he desires that all who would be saved will be saved. That is all who would have an open mind and a desire to know the truth. Because as we know from John 8, 32, that if we know the truth, if somebody knows the truth, that truth will set that person free. And when that happens, that person will come to know Jesus as their Messiah, as their Lord. And so that is happening even now. But it will be on this scale, the likes of which history has never seen before. Why is that important? Because Jesus is coming in the near future. Jesus is coming to reclaim his people. And once he does that, then we will see what is spoken about in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel. And I speak on another video about this very thing, about the end times. But first is the revival. That is the stage we're in. We're seeing a restoration of the age of the Jew, and we're seeing the Gentile now also coming to even a deeper understanding of Jesus as Lord in some areas. In the persecuted church, especially, the persecuted church in places around the globe where it is not traditional or comfortable to be a believer in Jesus, we're seeing an outspreading and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, those in the Western world are not seeing that firsthand, but it's happening today. We're seeing people in, gro in droves of people coming to know Jesus as their Lord and their Messiah. That's happening now. And in the churches of Europe and in South America, Central America, North America, and in other places in Australia, New Zealand, and in the Ukraine, and even Russia, and uh, the Middle East, and other parts of the world, there is going to be a revival. There will also be an end times, but preceding that is the revival so that all who would be saved will be saved. So at the time that God claims his beloved and takes them into heaven, that he will have known and been secure in the knowledge that though he had given every last chance, every opportunity for those who seek the truth to know the truth, to be set free to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So beloved of the Lord, uh, beloved of the Lord, yes, be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Until next time, take care and God bless.